I do the grocery shopping and I was surprised by a recent recall of Sabra hummus because that's what we have at our house and that was last month. Thousands of cases of this product removed from the shelves at my grocery store as well as probably yours due to some suspected contamination of listeria. Yeah. Dr. JJ is going to answer a few questions for us like what is listeria? So just to recap, it's a, it's a foodborne bacteria. It thrives in the cold so it can live in your refrigerator. Most germs die in the cold. Yeah. Listeria lives and thrives in the cold, so it can be present in frozen wow. food. It can be present in food in your refrigerator if your refrigerator isn't uh, uh, below 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. It is present in unpasteurized foods like unpasteurized juices, dairy products. It's in fruits and vegetables and uncooked meats, or even things that are pasteurized or cooked that may be contaminated yeah. by food handlers. This yeah. is afterwards. really scary. Every time we turn around, something else we, we can't eat or we have to be well, careful. And I know Kim. Your son was diagnosed with listeria when he was born. How, how do you, right. you yeah. when you hear that, you say, well, how is that possible? How did he contract it? Well, Dr. JJ and I spoke a lot about this, and you correct me if I'm wrong, one in six adults, like Matt's size, dies from listeria. I was um, going to have Hunter, he was eight and a half weeks early. I had a piece of cheese, we believe, Jeez. because as um, Dr. JJ said, it's it's primarily in dairy. Yeah, thirty percent of cases are from dairy, fifty percent from fr fruit and vegetables. I had a piece of cheese that big when I eight and a half weeks at my baby shower before I was supposed to. Um, have Hunter and I contracted it, got very ill that night. All of a sudden, I felt completely fine, and Hunter, who had kicked me for all eight months, um, went completely still. Oh my God! And um, then he was born eight and a half weeks early. Had three blood transfusions because he contracted the mm -hmm. listeria, mm -hmm. and um, truly, you know. And I don't usually go out on a limb like this, but truly, one hundred percent. The only way that he survived was um, three blood transfusions went down to a pound and a half, was born at three pounds, was through prayer, 100%, I have no doubt. And that's why, you know, you guys probably get sick of hearing me talk about him yeah. being a big guy and a football player, but he was three pounds when he was born. So and he's healthy now. Yeah. Who's at risk? So the, the people most at risk are pregnant women. They constitute 14% of the cases, but they're 10 times more likely to be affected by listeria to eat it. So if I ate it and I'm healthy and I'm under 65, I might get a little, I might get the runs, I might be down for a day, think I had food poisoning. But anyone who's pregnant definitely has 10 times greater chance of getting a serious case. Mm. People over 65 as well. So a few years ago, there was a cantaloupe uh, outbreak of listeria, and several elderly in this country, over 100 people died from, from wow. listeria from that. Uh, and also people who are immune suppressed, so people who have HIV AIDS, who are on chemo, radiation, or anybody with chronic illness who's on medications, those are the folks <clears> who really should be very stringent and careful about what foods they eat and how they prepare them. How do you know? How do you diagnose it? Okay, so you diagnose it by, first of all, a, a suspicious history like you may have had. You can find it in the blood. You can find it in the amniotic fluid. You can find it in the brain on a spinal tap. Uh, and so those are the ways that you confirm it. But often it might be just the history that's so compelling you may not find it diagnostically, but you treat it if you suspect it because how? of its deadly nature. How do you? IV antibiotics. And also, because it can dump your blood pressure, because it can cause you to be really wow. seriously ill, a lot of supportive care measures too, yeah. blood yeah. transfusions sure. and, and yeah. things like that. Well, what are the symptoms? Like, how do you... Well, a typical person, if we ate listeria, we may not get anything or the runs or just feel like we're down like for a day or so. But, but what's the difference between feeling food poison and listeria? The di well, it, no real difference except mm -hmm. the severity of symptoms for someone who's really infected in the blood, horrible body aches, fever, chills, diarrhea, vomiting, and just, a, a, and, and especially if you're at risk, those are the things that are going to get you into your doctor's office and an of astute diagnostician would ask you what foods you'd recently eat. Quick word on prevention. Prevention, okay. Don't buy cut fruit at the market. Cook your meats thoroughly. Wash your fridge inside a couple times a year with uh, soap and water, ammonia, or um, alcohol, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and also... Eat foods by their sell-by date. Don't go even a day past. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're at risk, stay away from unpasteurized meats, unpasteur excuse me, unpasteurized dairy products, unpasteurized juices. That sounds like everything. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not because pasteurized foods, they're, they're labeled clearly. So the key yeah. thing is to really just be safe in your food practices, especially the summer with picnics coming up and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Wow. And the temp of your fridge, under Thank 40.